going on guys? This is all about jack plates from low to high, including a special one that we have chosen for this boat build. This video is long, so here are the time breaks so you can find exactly what you need, what jack plates are and what they actually do, low to high comparisons being the lowest of the low to the highest most fancy jack plates out there, and the on the fly jack plate full install and review. Please like, comment, and share this video to help this channel trend. We appreciate it. What does a jack plate do? A jack plate gives you optimal clearance for you to get the maximum speed out of your boat. So under ideal conditions, you can honestly gain anywhere from two to five miles more out of your outboard performance versus just being on the transom. Most transoms are placed at about 15 to 20 inches, maybe 21 if you're lucky. And the standard outboards for a short shaft transom, which is 15 inches, drops down about six or so inches below the cavitation plate. And that's like that, I think, anyways, because you'll at least get the most medium range performance, meaning whether or not it's super calm, ideal conditions, or it's very, very choppy, your cavitation plate will be in the correct depth, and then you can kind of just be there. But if you're on really calm waters where it doesn't get very rough most all the time, you can actually move that motor up. In most flat bottoms like skiffs or john boats, it's recommended that the cavitation plate stays right there at the ledge, right there in the sweet spot, kind of center. And that's supposed to give you the most optimal performance out of your boat like that. And for some boats, it's actually higher. For bass boats, you can actually make the cavitation plate well above the bottom line of the boat and you can actually get pretty optimal speeds. The bigger thing with raising it out is you'll drag out of the hole more, you won't actually get a faster on plane. The farther the motor is, you will get on plane a little faster depending on your trim setting. The secondary purpose of this thing is you can crank it up all the way out of the water to where it's just barely sitting in the, the motor itself, it's just barely sitting in the water deep enough for you to gather enough water for the motor to piss. That is also a really, really good thing for people who are working in flats, shallows. That's also a really, really big prop for, for a jack plate. And in a way, a jack plate can prop an ordinary outboard with no uh, power trim to be very good. And especially if your motor has power tilt. If you have power tilt on a jack plate, you can get max optimal speed. You can get out of the hole very quickly and you can get a max speed very quickly by putting your right to the correct tilt and then also having your jack plate at optimal height. With my micro jacker on my boat, I got an extra five miles an hour out of it at optimal like height at ideal conditions. How you know it's out too high, your motor will start to like sound like it's gargling. That's it's cavitating when you're wah, wah, wah. It's not great. If you hear that while you're dragging out of the hole and you, you hear a lot of that, your trim pin setting's either too high out or your jack plate's too, up, too far up. You also have to keep in mind that the thicker the jack plate is in the back, it's like a rough estimate, but estimated between every, for every three inches you get a setback, you have to go up one inch. So that means at, at the max just stock transom, when you drop your motor on that, and then it's on plane, that means your motor is at X level. So if you have something extending, that actually extends the depth of your motor when your boat is trying to get on pad. So it's actually deeper in the water. And for that reason, it has to, for every so many inches you go past the transom, it has to go up one inch. So we have it estimated around three. Could be different from your boat, maybe not. But you see uh, a lot of you see a lot of the jack plates already have about a two to three inch rise before you even start to jack it up because they're so thick. They're three to six inches on average. We're gonna look at jack plates a little bit from low to high. We're gonna talk about one specifically made for small outboards and some of the adaptations that you might need for those because that's what we do. We do small boats, portable outboards mo mainly. So we're gonna talk about a few of the best ones. This ultimately filters to what we chose to use on this boat. And I'm gonna explain to you why I chose it over any sort of electric jack plate because we could have got any jack plate. We really could have. This one is specifically genius. So first up, people make a lot of their own stuff. And it's easy enough to get two pieces of angle, place them together like this, put them like that, and there's your jack plate. We actually sell this as part of a four pieces and a pretty solid backing. You would tap and drill your own holes, get your own hardware. It's a lot cheaper that way versus us supplying the hardware. The cost will go up exponentially. And most people just go to a metal shop and get these pieces, but you'll end up having a lot extra over and you'll end up having to pay for cut charges. So we generally can get it out a little bit cheaper than your local metal shop, but if you can get it cheaper at your local metal shop, then for so, so be a lot of people do that. I did that. My first jack plate was a DIY jack plate and it worked quite well. Next up from that, next up from that we have a TH Marine mini jack, which is a fixed raise, right? About a three inch rise in the stock transom height, which I'm not really sure. Cause like for every like, so it's about three inches back, so you can go one. So it'll give you about a two, two inch, a comfortable rise. Meant for a small outboard. I'm not exactly sure, but clearly this is not the most robust. You'll have to put a backer plate or you have to put bushings. By the way, if you ever if you ever want to thicken this plane, generally we recommend that people just through bolt it to your motor. Like, and the clamps are gonna stick out a little bit higher and protrude and not hit this, but it doesn't matter if, you're, if your motor's through bolted. So you'd have to through bolt it to here, and then you'd have to get like chunks of wood or something and put it here so that your clamps would at least tighten. So you wouldn't have the clamps just free spinning or whatever. It'll still add structure there and rigidity. But other than that, there's not 
a whole lot of gain from this one over this one other than you don't have to build it. But if you do build this one and you do tap the holes correctly down the side, then you can you can actually adjust this one. It's a pain to adjust, but it, you can adjust. You can make your own DIY adjustable one or just can get a fixed plate. Next would be one like this. This one, I don't know what the brand is. I think that's the brand. Check it out. This is actually an adjustable one. If you, it's right here. So you'd have to get a socket and you can adjust it, which isn't terrible. I mean, you can still do tuning, not while you're, while you're like motoring out, you'd have to stop and just tune it. Have a, have a socket wrench or have, a, have an impact driver ready, an impact socket. But even, even there, I mean, you still have these bolts here that you're supposed to tighten. They're really, it's just a little bit more easier versus having to pull out bolts in and out and then replacing the bolts because that would be so it's a little easier but it's doing it on the fly and then having to untighten these not great i'm pretty sure you're supposed to tighten these after you've adjusted this so there's no way this can actually be done on the fly but it can be adjusted way easier than say your diy one and then obviously clearly your fixed jack plate's not great and then it's got a pretty thick h2pe backing this is where you clamp the motor onto really really high density polyethylene or maybe it's even UHMW. It's really, really super slick. I don't know if it's terribly advantageous to be super slick. I know it's it's definitely 100% waterproof. That's probably why they picked it, but it's very slick. So you definitely have to throw bolt this because your standard clamps are not going to really work. Another issue I have with some motors is that your clamps will always kind of hit this end. Like this is specifically made for a small outboard. You can tell. Three eighths. Any, any larger outboard requires half inch hardware. But this is, I think, right around 200 bucks or just under 200 bucks. It's not terrible, but I mean, it's probably, it's definitely better than that thing. And there's a lot of these that are fixed for higher horsepower ratings. You can go all the way up to four or five, 600 bucks, depending on which one you get. And it's all, and it's mainly because it's, it's thicker, bigger, more robust, more material meant for bigger outboards. But the same problem like persists that you have to take time to unadjust these bolts and then the top one to tune it. So there's not no actual micro tuning on the fly to get it perfect. It's a lot of trial and error. Eventually you'll get it perfect, but. Other ones are these, these are hydraulic jack plates. This is the smallest, cheapest hydraulic jack plate you can get for the money. This is an Atlas micro jack. And I specifically like it because it doesn't sit too far back, but it's meant for a bigger outboard, 60 horse outboard. So I think this is meant for, I think 40 horse and above. I mean, after a certain horsepower, and we go, th we go through classes of horsepower, but I think it's after 30, but specifically 40 horse and above, you start having these specific bolt patterns, like through bolt patterns that match up to standard hydraulic jack plates that are meant to push motors this big and lift motors this big. So it's pretty nice. It, it was, I think about a grand when I retailed it. I want to actually use it for my portable, for my 25 to see what kind of speeds I can get out of a 25 with a true hydraulic jack that you could adjust on the fly. And uh, I couldn't do it. You actually had to buy other other riser plates and adapter plates. So it was actually closer to 1200 with all that if I was going to do that. But then I said, eh, screw that. And I just stuck 60 on there, which I need to clean. Yeah, it's got all kinds of, I'm going to, I'm going to get, I do like that. It's fairly low. It's fairly low profile. I like the low profile in this, but in terms of like cream of the crop jack plates, it's, it's it's, it's like the lowest of the low for hydraulic jacks. Everything else gets obscenely more expensive, 1200, 1500 and up for like the top of the line ones, especially ones that come out in bolt out so you can mount talons. Smaller outboards, yeah, if you get the conversion kit, but then it's, you know, when you start to deal with electric jack plates, hydraulic jack plates at all, you have to start dealing with relays and fuses and wiring and finding out where to put that switch, whereas there was no good place to put that switch. So I stuck it right there. I really don't like it there. I don't, but there was no other place to put it. And so you got to think about that. They give you a pretty copious amount of wire. They're expecting you to put this on actual bass boats. They give you a lot of wire to wire it wherever, but clearly we've only got one cockpit. I definitely think it's the right the right fit for me. And again, because it's not so thick, it's only about a three and a half inch thickness. Going up, I get like the max raise out of this is like four inch. I think you can get another one that's a little bit more expensive that gives you a little bit higher rise, but it's a bigger jack plate. So I don't really know. That's, this is a perfect, probably perfect application for this boat considering this boat's not that big. This thing on the other hand is completely manual, no wires, no relays, no switches, no fuses, but you can completely adjust it on the fly. And I think it's the sweetest thing. It's about 600 bucks, totally worth it. Super nice casting, UHMW plastic sleeving, and the handle is buttery smooth. You can adjust this right to the sweet spot. You can also adjust this on the fly. And this is videos all over on the fly jack plates. 
complete manual on the fly jack plates, no need for a hydraulic unit or a linear actuator, no need for any of that. This thing will never bust. Have you ever blown a relay or blown a fuse and then had to troubleshoot that with your motor's out and you're just like floating dead in the water? I personally, as somebody who's wired boats like extensively, hate electrical failures. Hate them, hate them. Anything I can do to get around them, I will do. So I love this thing. I'm a huge proponent of it, and I'm gonna show you how to install this thing today and what it can offer you. You see this. This is a pretty nice, thick, robust jack plate. They ain't playing around here. It's very nice, very well built. And in here, you have a UHMW plastic sleeve that's fitted in there pretty nice, and that is where the jack plate rises up and down on the fly for you. It's pretty nice, it's like very well, very well built. Then you got the mounting stack here with a cross beam that holds the whole thing in tight, and then that just slides in. And the crucial thing about this here is that with a lot of other jack plates, including the one I have on my boat, they're just not really good for portable tillers. They're really not. They're meant for like boats you can, you can permanently mount stuff to because and there's always issues with spacing, but this is just one flat plate and that's honestly what you need. And when really when you're trying to retrofit a jack plate to fit a portable tiller with clamps, you'd have to just run a, a straight plate like this anyways. That's what you have to do, but they already did it for you here because they're, they're expecting you to do that. This is very nice. Comes with a warranty card, a fairly detailed instruction manual, and these spacers are added. So generally when you, when you bolt the motor, unless you're you can either do two things. You can put extra stacks of plywood behind this to thicken it out so the clamps will reach it, or you can just bolt the motor directly to the plate, which is what's recommended. And for the uh, and for your clamps, they just make spacers. These are sold separately, or you can just make them out of like a uh, two by four, just so your clamps are just not dangling in the wind. But once you bolt your motor to the transom, the clamps are pretty useless. They, they do add a little bit of extra stiffness and rigidity. So there's something to think about. Also comes with mounting hardware. I love that. And that is not something a lot of jack plates would come despite how expensive they are. And I will tell you that officially. <laughs> Stainless steel hardware is expensive. That's another thing, having your bar all the way high up here, that way you can get the max clearance. This thing is all the way down right now, and this, this beam here clears this. You wanna make sure it does that. So if you have this flush with the top, it will clear this. Seven inches, that's what I thought. That's seven inch raise. So right now it's set about after the transom about quite a few inches, about six inches. Subsequently, it's about two inches higher than the actual transom here. So that's just, and right now it's like stock height of what it would be without any jacking if it was just sitting on the transom normally, but it's slightly raised to compensate for the setback. We have, right now the cavitation plate is underneath the bottom of the transom, underneath the water line of the boat, underneath the bottom of the boat. Now. Where this cavitation plays from here all the way up, that matters. Okay. Now it's much farther up. That is, remember it was about one or two inches of, a little higher, maybe an inch or two higher. This this piece, which doesn't even re represent a true flat line, it's a tube. And even then it was still, it was still atop, above the cavitation plate. Now the cavitation plate's well above the tube, well above the tube, like really, honestly, almost the bottom of the motor just the inlet part. So really this cat, this this jack plate allows just the very, very bottom of the motor to be in. So you can run extremely shallow with this. That is really, I think what a lot of people truly favor about it. I, I favor its simplicity. It's ability to do what electric jack plates can do without any of the mess. But maybe it's true beauty is just, man, how far I can jack up the motor. <laughs> These are specifically made for small portable tillers, long shaft and short shaft, under 30 horse. So what do you think of this thing? A lot of people all across all platforms thought it was overpriced. A lot of people thought it was genius. I personally think it's freaking genius and fantastic for what it does. We have them on our site across all our platforms. Check out all our platforms, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. We have a full website, all kinds of tutorials, much more than what you see on the simple YouTube channel. Check out our TV Nation Outdoors channel, which is new. Check out our Facebook group, which has quite a few members in it. It's as big as a small city. So if you want to get group feedback from peers, check us out there. Also, if you want to find this jack plate, it is right directly on our site. Search on the fly jack plates along with any other part you would ever need to build your boat out. Thank you much. Tight lines. See you in the next video.